We will next take questions to cabinet members after, after, considering, after considering report number one. We will debate item 17 and will then debate item 18. I appreciate that this change in the anticipated sequence of business has caused controversy in the chamber, but I would, but I would, I would urge, could you kindly keep quiet? I would urge, and I would urge members to respect the council's decision on this matter and also my rule, my role as the mayor of the council in this chamber. Item six. So item six is members' questions. Can I ask that members who wish to ask supplementary questions stand up and state supplementary, and also that any supplementary questions are put forward clearly and briefly. Question number one, Councillor Osborne. You've done that one. We've done that one. Where the asterisk Where the asterisk goes. Right. Question number one to the deputy leader again. No, let's not. <laughs> How about we don't? Question number twelve, please, Councillor Jones. Question number 12 to the Cabinet Member of, of the Community Services. I thank Councillor Jones for this question. I, I, if members will forgive me, I think we've covered this ground um, pretty, pretty thoroughly. Um, I don't mind going over it again. It's rather embarrassing for you guys. It's a uh, typical, uh, uh, typical Labour Party uh, trouble with numbers, uh, I would say. 62% um, uh, of the respondents to the survey is the point, not 62% of the borough. Uh, the respondents represent 0.27% of the population of the borough. So uh, I think we've probably all got that now. Sweet. Anderson. Torrington. Councillor Caddy. Councillor Caddy. Um, does the Cabinet member agree with me that most people who enjoy a particular, in a particular sporting event are highly unlikely to fill in an online survey about it? I certainly never have. And does he also agree that this makes the suggestion that our online survey was somehow some kind of a referendum on the issue quite ridiculous? Second, oh, sorry. I thank, uh, I thank Councillor Caddy for, for the question. I absolutely agree with that. Um, I myself don't think I have ever um, done such a survey after going to a sporting event. I think overwhelmingly the tendency of those who are happy uh, is they just get on with their lives. Um, so I think we can count footfall fairly reliably and the fact that we didn't have a whole host of complaints, the comments we had back from the people who were there uh, were overwhelmingly positive. So I think we can, uh, we can take that as probably the survey that matters above all. Second supplementary. Yes. I, I, I wonder if uh, I'd be allowed to just quickly ask whether or not the uh, cabinet member thinks 400 people writing to complain, 550 contributing to the Facebook page, 3,000 signing a local petition by Save Battersea Park, 86% expressing their opposition in the ones with Guardian, and 62% uh, of 2,576. Sorry, and 2,576 people signing a petition is an insignificant number, or is that actually an overwhelming uh, view expressed by the people who are most affected? I thank Councillor Jones for the supplementary question. Uh, I have never used the phrase uh, insignificant number. I don't dismiss those who are against. I said in my speech I fully comprehend and respect the fact there are people who, who don't like the event. I, I, I get that. I understand that. Um, my point is I don't believe that they do represent a majority. Uh, and regarding the various, uh, the various um, surveys and sources of information you just, uh, you just mentioned, uh, I think my previous answer largely cover it, covers it, though I, I, I would add that some of those sources, um, it's, uh, it's fairly clear from things that I've seen um, that some people have a tendency to adopt multiple identities uh, when certainly responding to the council's website. I have no doubt about that. Uh, and I'd also, uh, I would also uh, encourage Councillor Jones not to, be, uh, not to be too credulous of things she reads in the ones with Guardian. Experience tells me it's a very unreliable source of information. Uh, Councillor 13. That's Councillor 13. Question 13. Well, I wish there were 13 of you tonight. Councillor Sweet. Who's asking on behalf of Councillor Sweet? I ask a question um, 13 on behalf of Councillor Sweet of the Councillor Chairman for Planning Application. 
Thank you, uh, Councillor McCawson, for asking that on behalf of Councillor Sweet. Yes, this is very, very good news. Um, in Wandsworth, we're doing particularly well with our house building um, targets. This year, there's various figures given in the, um, in the answer here, but just to pick them out, this year, over 6,000 new homes have been approved in the borough, um, and that includes 5,000 market homes and 1,000 affordable, which is really good news. And then as of the end of March this year, there were over um, or nearly 6,000 units under construction and nearly 14,000 with planning permission but that haven't been started yet. So, um, and there's also 14,000 in the development pipeline. So we've got some very, very good figures there. In a way, it would be difficult for us not to have good figures with Vauxhall Nine Elms at, um, at the heart of this um, building boom. But it's also across the rest of the borough as well. Even in my ward of Nightingale, which isn't particularly renowned for its house building. We've got in innovative ways of taking old laundries or um, former petrol stations and adding more homes there. And I think that's the case across the whole borough. Uh, uh, Councillor Belton. Oh. I, I think um, it's usual uh, to give the um, party that asked the question the first, um, first go. I know Councillor Sweet's not here, Mr Mayor. But, uh, I'm sorry, yes, can you repeat? Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, would the... Um, uh, chairman of the Planning Applications Committee think that this, these figures are particularly good, um, not only the amount of um, planning applications which have been passed, uh, but the speediness with which they're um, getting on site, which is not always um, the sort of publicity that um, generally or nationally is, is, um, is broadcast by the media. Thank you, Councillor McCausland. Yeah, ab absolutely, I would agree with that. Obviously, there are one or two cases where it takes longer to get that spade in the ground, but we've got some very good examples in, in Wandsworth. We've got um, the Riverside de um, de um, construction, which got, off to, got going very quickly, and, and Battersea East, um, was, they were straight in and developing that new school as soon as they could. So we've got some very good examples. Councillor Belton. Thank you, Councillor Belton. Um, certain, um, certainly in the larger developments, it's, it's more like 25%. Obviously, this is taken average, and some of the smaller developments aren't going to, even, to offer affordable housing. But where possible, we all, and the officers are particularly um, constructive and um, positive about this, we work to get as much affordable housing as possible. And if it isn't actual affordable housing, we'll be going to have a commuted sum which can be used somewhere else to make it even more effective use of that money. But there are also other things we get out of these um, developments, public realm improvements, the Northern Line extension. Um, you, you, there are, there's a wide range of public benefits we get out of developers choosing Wandsworth to build in. Uh, question 14, Councillor Addison. Member of Community Services. Uh, thank you, Councillor Anderson, uh, for, for this question. I, the, not really very much add, to add to the, the written answer. Um, part of the contract, entirely consistent with what uh, people for places uh, put forward in the contract, uh, approved at committee. Uh, the explanation is, is here. Uh, they're not contracted to, uh, uh, to provide uh, care facilities at every leisure centre. Uh, usage is, is very low. Uh, and uh, they've come forward with uh, alternative proposals, which in their judgment of the, as the contractor may, is, a, is a more appropriate use of the space, as is their right to do. Supplementary. Councillor Anderson. Thank you. It was a shocking closure of um, the Ballam Leisure Centre crash on Monday. Uh, mums didn't know anything about it. It's, it's been out of the blue. Um, why is Ballam Leisure Centre the poor relation when local mums need a local facility? 
Uh, Tooting has a prominent crèche at the front. It doesn't need to advertise as much. Of course, if you hide Balham Leisure Centre crèche at the back, no one knows about it. The numbers are going to go down and it looks like not such a needed facility. So why is Balham being treated in this way? I thank Councillor for the uh, supplementary question. I, I don't think it's a poor, poor relation uh, in, in any, any respect. I think it's, it's a purely a matter of very low usage figures as far as I can understand. I think the questions the Councillor asks are probably more appropriately uh, directed at the contractor. I'm sure will be very happy to explain the differences. They're far better placed than I am to. They run the places and they do a very good job. Um, there are a number of, I, I have looked into the matter because I understand the concern uh, and I'm assured that there are uh, many similar facilities in the surrounding area uh, that are not fully utilised. I, I can offer the councillor a list, uh, I could easily do that. Uh, they're not fully utilised and they're nearby. Um, and nearby. Second Councillor Caddy. Councillor Caddy, please. Um, is the cabinet member pleased, as I was, to discover that there are several... Settle down. Is the cabinet member pleased, as I was, to discover that there are several local creches which could provide alternative childcare arrangements less than a mile away, and also that there's the 155 bus which takes just under 10 minutes to get from Ballam to Tooting Leisure Centre, where, as discussed, there's a fantastic creche. Uh, I thank Councillor... I thank Councillor... Caddy for that supplementary question. Yes, I, I was very pleased. It's a, it's a vibrant market, a market that, that clearly works well. Uh, there are many uh, less than a mile away. Uh, very happy to have uh, officers provide a list for uh, councillors who would like to see that. Uh, and uh, there is space available. We've checked that. So uh, it's a market that works, and uh, I'm, sure it will, I'm sure it will work out fine. I've answered that question about four times now. We'll provide you with a list. Councillor Mrs. Torrington. Uh, question number 15 to the Cabinet member. I thank Councillor Torrington for this question. I really am delighted to, uh, to share this with members. Uh, it is very, very good news and, uh, and uh, accords with a gut feeling that I've had for a very long time that our, our efforts in, in terms of our waste management uh, is not properly, uh, uh, which I believe is a very efficient system, uh, are, are not properly reflected in the uh, traditional measures of recycling, such as the, uh, the nonsense figures, for example, uh, published by the Evening Standard last week, uh, which always put us near the bottom of the table with London boroughs, uh, and I've always felt uh, that's wrong, and we've talked about it uh, here. Um, the, the essence of, uh, of uh, this, uh, this answer here, or this question and this answer, is that, uh, that if you take a different approach and you measure the carbon impact of our entire waste management cycle. Um, amazingly, not, uh, not only do we have a deficit, but we actually end up in credit uh, because, of course, our waste goes for uh, energy from waste, as in effect a medium-sized power station at Be Belvedere in Kent. And so when you factor all of that in, and you compare it in particular with the nonsense of burying it in the ground, which some people still do, um, we are way, way ahead of them. And so that puts us um, well up the rankings of all UK um, UK local authorities and the comparison which really matters, i.e. Other, <coughs> other boroughs, other local authorities like us, urban uh, local authorities, puts us second in London. Uh, so I think it's tremendously good use. We should be very proud of it. Councillor Torrington. Supplementary. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I very much welcome it. Um, and I was glad to see that some of the items which generate the highest carbon emissions, such as textiles, are already being recycled in the borough but that the article also cites electrical goods and metal. Uh, can we uh, promote that and look into increasing that recycling to do better still? I thank uh, Councillor Torrington for the supplementary question. Yes, we're always looking at new ways of, uh, of communicating the message. We've got our golden ticket um, uh, initiative on right now, uh, which I'm Delighted to say is uh, because we've offer, offered the, uh, the largest, uh, largest prize of the WRWA boroughs and uh, mysteriously we have the largest take up. Uh, it seems to be go working very well. Um, we're always thinking of new things. I can reassure members on metals that metals are recovered at uh, Belvedere. Uh, the, the ash from the uh, combustion process goes across to Tilbury and the metals are all pulled out. Uh, the remaining aggregate is used in construction uh, and amazingly uh, we've recently started using the fly ash as well is compressed into building blocks. So just about everything is used, which is very good news. Yes, Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, obviously, he is aware of uh, the figures that show that our recycling uh, compared to other London boroughs and um, authorities around the country are not good. And whilst I think all of us in the chamber are very pleased to know that um, things are not being stuck in landfill but are going to the Belvedere Energy from Waste Plant, 
don't you think we run the risk of looking just a tiny bit complacent by uh, congratulating ourselves on a notable achievement around these figures? I actually think that uh, the circular economy and reducing and recycling um, is incredibly important. So whilst I can understand that he wants to look at the overall carbon impact, don't we also need to be looking at new and innovative ways to be increasing recycling? Because our figures, regrettably, are poor. And actually, what was really not good about the last set of figures is it had dropped as well. So could he please reassure us that he is willing to look at that area as well and not just congratulate ourselves around overall carbon impact? Thank uh, Councillor Cooper for the question. I do believe she wasn't listening to the first thing I said, uh, which is that the uh, old figures, uh, and particularly the ones erroneously quoted last week by the Evening Standard, do not properly reflect our performance for reasons that we've debated here in this chamber. We've discussed at great length uh, at OSC, and uh, Councillor Grimston brought a paper uh, to OSC in September, I believe. We talked about it at enormous length. Uh, it is a fact that they do not, and we went into the detail of why, that they do not capture our performance adequately. And what I, I am arguing here, and not in any uh, complacent manner, I can assure you, what I am arguing here is that if you look at it in terms of carbon impact, it's a very different story and one which much more ac accurately reflects our performance. Um, always thinking about new things, uh, recycling, <coughs> constantly, uh, constantly uh, thinking about that. Uh, we re-examine the question, for example, of food waste virtually annually. Um, thus far, I've not been convinced. It would cost us around about a million pounds a year to uh, implement food waste uh, collection um, in the borough. Uh, and that's leaving aside all sorts of other negative consequences as well. But we constantly re-examine the question just to see that we're not missing anything. So no complacency. I can absolutely assure the councillor of that. Councillor Hogg. Question 16 to the cabinet member. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to thank Councillor Hogg for uh, his question. Uh, as is stated in the, the figures, um, there are currently 1,133 households in temporary accommodation, uh, uh, and that's what we estimate will be there in time for Christmas. As I'm sure uh, Councillor Hogg will recall, when the figures were produced at the uh, scrutiny, uh, Housing Overview and Scrutiny Committee uh, three weeks ago, the, uh, the figure at the end of September was uh, 1,162. Uh, so that clearly the figures are going down, and I'm sure he'll also recall that the end-of-year forecast was 1,307. I'm sure that the councillor will uh, join me in um, both thanking and congratulating our staff in the housing department uh, for all the work that they do, uh, and express his pleasure at the reduction in the number of homeless families, something we've been working for for a very long time. Supplementary. Supplementary. Councillor Hogg. Um, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, obviously, it's desperately sad that more than a 1,000 uh, local families will be homeless this Christmas. I was just wondering if the Cabinet Member could explain in a bit more depth what the strategy is over the next year to make sure the figure is significantly lower next Christmas. Um, Madam Mayor, I, I'm sorry that Councillor Hogg obviously didn't feel that uh, our staff should be thanked and congratulated uh, for the work that they do on behalf of some very vulnerable residents. Uh, I would like to assure the uh, director who's behind uh, me that certainly on our side we are extremely appreciative of all the work that the front of uh, house staff do um, in all departments of the council. Some do very difficult and in some cases dangerous jobs, jobs and I think they should deserve our thanks and appreciation uh, for what they do. Um, however, that's uh, up to the opposition if they choose not to. Um, the councillor is certainly well aware of all the measures that we are putting in place. Um, I, I can't really see any benefit in going through them all over again. He knows that we're buying properties. He knows we're using our own properties. Uh, he knows we're using extensive use uh, of the private rented sector. Second supplementary. Councillor Oh, Oh, sorry. That's all right. Uh, does the Cabinet member know of anything more that is being done in other boroughs on housing that we could learn from? I'd like to thank Councillor Lescott for his question, and it's actually a very pertinent question. Um, according to a, a, a magazine that I got the other day, uh, there's around about um, 68,000 homeless families in England, of whom 40,000, they estimate, are, are in London. So clearly it is a very big London-wide problem and, and, and I think essentially a an inner London problem. Um, interestingly, I was actually at a, a, an event recently uh, where I spoke to a couple of colleagues of mine from other boroughs, from uh, Hackney and Greenwich, obviously our Labour colleagues, and we had a, a discussion about that. And uh, frankly, they are not doing anything different to what we're doing. Um, 
Obviously, if anybody does have any great ideas uh, or, or can show that we're missing a trick, uh, we'd be very happy to, uh, to, to see those. Um, but I'm afraid, you know, short of actually trying to secure accommodation for people, there's very little we can do. The reason there's a housing shortage is, frankly, because there aren't enough homes. So the more houses we build, uh, the better. Uh, and um, certainly uh, the Planning Applications Committee is um, pushing those applications through at a rapid rate. Um, they're always popular with uh, local residents, uh, but uh, clearly, you know, as a borough, we are delivering all tenures of housing at all prices, and um, we're very, also very hopeful of a, of a institutional private rental uh, schemes coming into the borough as well, uh, which will also assist greatly the, the PRS market. Councillor Tom. Question 17 to the Cabinet member. Uh, I'd like to thank Councillor Tom for his question. The, the, the Housing and Planning Bill uh, was sort of briefly discussed at the, the last council meeting, and in fact it had only been published that day. And now that we uh, can see some of the... Uh, the implications of it. I think it is actually an extremely good piece of legislation. Uh, the right to buy for uh, housing association tenants will be uh, uh, introduced uh, and indeed um, a couple of housing associations, one of whom is a large stockholder in the borough, uh, have agreed to be part of a pilot scheme. I don't believe uh, uh, any homes in the borough will be part of that initial pilot, but that's very exciting news indeed uh, for housing association tenants. Uh, the uh, introduction of the Starter Homes Initiative I think is also a very good initiative and that will benefit a lot of people. Uh, and uh, I think of great relevance to some of the discussion we've had this evening uh, is the uh, government's proposals to deal with rogue landlords. In my view, that is far a uh, more sensible way of dealing with things rather than having uh, licensing schemes which will cover 95% of good landlords. Uh, what we want to do is to uh, either put out of business the bad landlords or get them to uh, up their game and, and actually deliver uh, decent properties. Um, this government is the first one that has ever actually come up with that particular scheme. I do hope it's something that everybody will support. I think it's an excellent bill uh, and uh, it's going to the Commons at the moment. Uh, hopefully it will be law in about three months' time. Councillor uh, Supplementary, if I may, uh, Cabinet Member. Uh, of course, the housing bill also brings in mandatory rents for high-income social tenants. And many of you will remember the late unrelented uh, Bob Crow, who won £145,000 a year, uh, enjoyed a nominal rent for his house. And likewise, uh, the, I don't think he's late yet, but the unlamented uh, Frank Dobson, again living in, uh, in, te in the municipal uh, territory. So I hope that this uh, coming in, this mandatory rent, finally will deal with what was, frankly, a labour-induced scandal. Do you agree with that? <laughs> um, <f> <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Councillor Tom for, for his, uh, and to say actually he's also, missed, he's also missed off a couple of baronesses from Tower Hamlets as well who also benefited from the, the largesse of uh, housing associations. Yes, I do support it. Um, I, th there's a lot of change going on in the Labour Party, isn't there? Really? Sort of progress is going out of the window. Momentum is what's coming in. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe the old uh, rule book will be brought back uh, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. And so the people who have the ability to pay the higher rent will do so. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Why, why should people... Madam Mayor, are they really saying that people who are on high incomes should be getting subsidised rents? Is that what they are really saying? If they are, they're more stupid than I thought they were. Uh, question 18 to the Cabinet Member for Adult Care and Health, please. Madam Mayor, um, I'm a trifle baffled by this question, only that I think that it would be better directed to the Chief Executive of the... Um, St George's Healthcare Trust, uh, all the answers would be provided by him and I'm quite, not quite certain why they've been addressed to me, but having said that, um, um, the councillor will recall that the Chief Executive of the Trust appeared at the OSC four weeks ago. There was a public board meeting of St George's Healthcare Trust on Thursday last week and he would have had an ample opportunity to ask the questions that he's asked of me. All I can say is that I wish I had Miles Scott's salary. Supp supplementary, Madam Mayor. I thank the Cabinet Member for Health, amongst other things, for answering the question and the lengthy written answer about the worsening position of the budget and services at St George's. And I want to ask as a supplementary, does the Cabinet Member agree with the Chair of St George's Hospital Trust, Christopher Smallwood, that an accelerated financial disaster is in progress 
in the NHS and that standards of care are being eroded and the DOH expectations of a 22 billion savings over the lifetime of the Parliament is quite unrealistic. And what responsibility does he and his government bear for this situation? Simple answer, Madam Mayor, no. Second supplementary. Uh, the end of the Cabinet. I'm sorry, I can't see. <laughs> Councillor Clare. Um, does um, the Cabinet member agree with me that it's a little bit rich for the Labour Party to, to start dispensing financial advice to the NHS? Um, does he think that um, maybe brandishing a little red book would be helpful on this front? <laughs> In the interest of brevity, Councillor Carpenter, yes. Uh, but, <laughs> um, I think it is. I would. I would acknowledge that I. Ha I do have. Re I do have regular meetings with the chief executive. I had one uh, ten days ago, and I'm planning for another one in early January in advance of the next overview and scrutiny committee, when these matters will be discussed. But I think uh, I agree with my colleague, Councillor Clay, that uh, to um, to comment on the financial. Uh, propensity for uh, dealing with these matters is a, is a bit rich coming from the other side. That is the end of uh, questions to Cabinet.